Good morning, my dear students. I hope all of you are fine and well at home. Welcome to our online classes. In today's session, children, we will start chapter 13, sound. In this chapter, we will learn about how is sound produced, what are vibrations, what is an instrument called tuning fork, and some definitions of vibration, mean and extreme position, and amplitude. So let us start. Now, when I say the word sound, children, you get to hear so many different sounds all around you on daily basis like the sound of a motorbike starting like the sound of the chirping of birds like somebody a musical instrument is playing there may be various noises all around you but all of them are different they might be loud they might be feeble they might be very say uh, shrieking sounds they might be very sharp they might be very dull now how are they produced see when very uh, very easy experiment you can do you just put your fingers when you are speaking do you feel anything Yes, you can feel the vibration of the vocal cords. So when your vocal cords are vibrating, then you are able to produce sound. Similar ways, when any vibrating body vibrates, it produces sound. So what do we understand? Understood that sound is produced as a result of vibrations. It is the phenomena of a vibrating body when it vibrates, then it produces sound. Right? But these vibrations, remember, may or may not be visible to us. Like you say, when we are banging our desk, we cannot see the desk vibrating. We are clapping our hands, we cannot see the hands vibrating. How are they vibrating? Uh, like for example, a honey bee, it is vibrating its wings. You can see the vibrations also and you can hear the sound also. But when you are clapping your hands, you cannot see the hands vibrating. What happens is, the vibrations are very fast. They are so rapid that they cannot be seen by us. So when the vibrations are very rapid, we are not able to see them but they are there. It does not mean that the body is not vibrating. All vibrating bodies vibrate and then they produce sound. But it is not essential that all vibrating bodies will produce sound. Look at the difference of the sentence. Sound is produced when a vibrating body vibrates but all vibrating bodies may or may not produce sound. Understood? Now, what is a vibration? You must remember that you have learnt about the oscillating pendulum last year about the oscillation. Similar ways in terms of vibrating bodies we describe a vibration. The to and fro motion of a vibrating body is termed as vibration. We can also define it as the movement of a vibrating body from first extreme position to the second extreme position and back to the first. This is termed as vibration. Now take this tuning fork for example. This is an instrument for tuning fork, right? These are the two prongs of the tuning fork and this is the stem of the tuning fork. This tuning fork as you can see is used in the labs to produce sound, right? Now, when I strike this tuning fork on the pad and put it near my ear, I am able to hear the sound. Although, I cannot see these two prongs vibrating. Why? Because the vibrations are very rapid. We will not be able to see them but we will be able to hear them. Understood? So this prongs will vibrate at a very fast rate and produce sound vibrations. Now let us do a simple experiment. I strike the tuning fork and put it near this thermocol ball. Right? I have taken this strand, a very light cotton thread attached to a light thermocol ball. I did not take a pendulum like we did last year. Why? Because the bob is very heavy. Here we are taking a light thermocol ball and a light cotton thread which is very easy to move. So when I strike it using a tuning fork and put it near it. Can you see the vibrations here children? Yes? Can you see the to and fro motion? Right? This is what the vibrations do. Just like a simple pendulum it also starts moving. But though the vibrations are there, sound is not produced in this case. Getting it? This is an example of a body where the vibrations or oscillations can be seen but the sound will not be produced. Right? Now, this is a simple pendulum that you studied last year. This is what? The oscillating simple pendulum that you have learned already last year. This is the oscillation. How is it defined? The to and fro motion of a pendulum or the movement of a pendulum bob from first extreme position to the second extreme position and back to the first. This was oscillation. Similar ways you will define a vibration. The vibration is a to and fro motion of a vibrating body or 
the motion of a vibrating body from its first extreme position to the second extreme position and back to the first. Right? Now, what is the second definition? The mean position, M. M is the mean position of a pendulum or a vibrating body. Where it is at rest like this, it is not moving. It is simply at rest. The same goes for the vibrating body. When the vibrating body is not moving, it is at rest. It is called as a mean position. What is extreme position? The farthest distance travelled by the vibrating body from its mean position. The farthest distance covered by a vibrating body from its mean position is termed as extreme position. Right? Now, third definition is of the amplitude. What is amplitude? You can see in this case, A. I have written A here. This is amplitude. Simply, the distance between the mean and the extreme position. For example, if it is 5 cm this side, it will also be 5 cm this side. So, amplitude is nothing but the distance between the mean and the extreme position of a vibrating body. Now, don't get confused. Why am I referring to vibrating body instead of pendulum? is because we are learning about sound. We are learning about sound here and we will only define vibrations and vibrating body instead of a simple pendulum. I hope you understood all the definitions. So quickly let us recap today's session. We have learned about vibrations. Vibrations, what are vibrations? The definition, the to and fro motion of a vibrating body or the movement of a vibrating body from its first extreme position to the second and back to the first. We have learned about a tuning fork. These are the two prongs. This is the stem. It is used to produce sound vibrations in a lab. We have learned about a vibrating body and the terms related to it. Mean position, extreme position and the amplitude. I hope so in today's class what have we studied? We have learned about the production of sound. That sound is produced by a vibrating body. It and you shake it. What happens? It starts moving up and down. This up and down movement is called a vibration, or we can also call it a to and fro motion, back and forward motion. Right? These are called the vibrations, and this is how the sound is produced. Now, how do you define a vibration? Vibrations are very fast and rapid backward and forward movement, which you also call as to and fro movement. Right? To and fro and backward and forward are the same or left to right motion are called vibrations. The vibrations you can very well see when you are uh, the strings of a guitar or sitars are vibrating, when the stretched rubber band is vibrating, when a uh, scale right at one end if you have placed it under weight and the second is, end is free then you start vibrating it. It moves up and down. The same way it also vibrates. So the, uh, the vibrating bodies, when they vibrate, they start producing sound. But as I told you in the class just now, that all vibrating bodies may not produce sound. Now, in today's class, we also learned about the tuning fork. What is the tuning fork? It is an instrument used to produce sound vibrations in a lab, right? When you strike it on a pad, it starts, the prongs start vibrating and they start producing sound. Now, how do we come to know that the prongs are vibrating and it is producing sound? First, we can hear a very, uh, this feeble humming sound of the prongs when we, when we hear it very carefully. The second thing is, we can also prove it through an activity that was when we had a, this cotton thread attached to a small, either you take a very light tennis ball plastic ball or we took a thermocol ball just now. So you take that thermocol ball, attach it to a cotton thread and attach that thread like a pendulum to a stand. Now when you bring a vibrating tuning fork near the ball, you touch it, the ball starts vibrating the same way as a pendulum does. So it also starts vibrating from left to right or shows backward and forward motion which is called a vibration. right? But in this case it is not Yes, it is not producing sound. It is only showing vibration. Now, what are the definitions that we learned in today's class? First was vibration. The movement of a vibrating body from its one extreme position to another and back to the first extreme position. The second definition was the mean. Mean position which is the resting position of a vibrating body. And when it is not moving, it is simply at rest. Then extreme position is the farthest distance which a vibrating body travels from its mean position. 
and the distance between the mean and the extreme position of a vibrating body is called its amplitude. It is simply the distance between the mean and the extreme position. It can be measured in centimeters and uh, say meters or millimeters because it is the distance. Now I hope you have learnt all the definitions. Last year also you learnt it. So it was a recap from that. I hope you understood what I explained in today's class. Please go through your chapter sound in your physics and your science books. Page number 152 and 153 very carefully. And in the next class we will study about the various sound vibrations. Right. I hope you liked today's uh, session. Goodbye for now children. Stay safe, stay healthy. Hope to meet you next time. Okay, goodbye.